Hey there YouTube, Tim Judge here. So, I recently encountered on Facebook someone who apparently honestly believed that this, the globe, that we're all familiar with, is a lie. That really, the Earth looks more like this. This is, uh, the flat Earth. So, we're gonna go through one way why you know that this is a more accurate representation of how the world is than this. And that's going to be because on this, right here, the globe, you can have both seasons, well, all seasons, and time zones, and you can even have sunsets and sunrises. Whereas here, if you have time zones and seasons, you don't get sunrises and sunsets. So here we go. Flat Earth rebuttal, because... I don't know. This is a top-down view of the Flat Earth model. So as you can see, the sun rotates over the Earth, and where it's above, that's where it's going to be noon, and the opposite side is going to be midnight. And so you can see that this does in fact give you the time zones that go across the world, where you can, you know, call your friend in Hong Kong at night if you're in America and you'll see that the sun is up there. And of course, you have to account for this because this, these observations are things that people can do readily. You don't have to trust the experience of other people. You can look at live feeds from across, across the world. If a friend of yours is traveling somewhere, you can just call them on like Skype or something like that. And there you go proof positive that time zones are real. Now, on this particular image, you'll see that the sun is going around the equator, which means that I've modeled this as being on one of the equinoxes. And the idea behind seasons on this flat Earth model is that during the northern hemisphere summer, this, this circle will shrink in towards the north pole that you see at the center. And during the northern hemisphere winter, although I guess we can't call them hemispheres if it's flat Earth, but whatever, but during what is normally considered the Northern Hemisphere winter, that circle will expand past the equator. And that gets you the north-south flipped seasons. And it even, as long as the um, this minimum and maximum are at the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn, you'll actually get the proper tropical bands. And the, you won't actually get the, trop the proper Arctic and Antarctic circles, but that's we'll get to that in a second. So... This model takes care of a lot of the problems with why it seems like the Earth is round, but according to these people, it's flat. Now, here's why you can't get sunsets and sunrises. Okay. So we're going to switch scenes here. And now what you're seeing is an image taken essentially from the surface of this disk. Right? So here, the camera is positioned right at the equator, and this is a very wide angle shot, so you're seeing almost 360 degrees of the sky. So on the left, you've got the western um, horizon. On the east, you've got, or sorry, on the right, you've got the east horizon, and then straight ahead of you is north. And one of the things you'll notice is that the sun always goes to the north, when, or from the north, when it's either going to night or from night into day. And so the sun does come up to be directly overhead, which is at the top edge of the, the frame. And so that's because we're on the equator and it's the equinox. So on the equator at equinox, the sun is directly overhead. But if you've ever actually been to the equator, which I have, you'll notice that the sun doesn't recede off to the north. It sinks straight down to the horizon at sunset. I mean... You're, you look west, and the sun goes straight down. Whereas, if the sun were circling above a disk, you would see it like this. You would see where the sun swings off to the west, and then, while staying in the western half, recedes towards the north, and the whole sky gets darker. And one other problem is that the sun would never actually dip below the horizon. It's hard to make out, but if I do this and add a line, which you can now see, that's where the horizon is, and you'll notice that the sun, the trajectory of the sun, never actually goes below that. 
So far from what you actually perceive of an everyday sunrise and sunset, if the sun were circling above a disc-shaped Earth, the sun would literally never set. Now, I've used some uh, volumetric scattering in this animation because, uh, you know, the atmosphere isn't just a perfectly clear medium. And so if the sun were a certain distance away, shining through the atmosphere, it would in fact get dark. And so I'm, that's how I'm simulating night here, as I'm saying, well, the, these light rays can't travel forever because the atmosphere is, you know, it's actually a fairly thick thing. Um, and it only seems thin when the sun is directly above us. And this is also the reason why the sun changes color at sunset. It's because it's having to travel through much more air than normal. And so this effect will be greatly amplified. And so that does take care of the, the night getting dark part, even though the sun is still up. So yeah, I hope you can see why all the explanations that flat earthers give, they explain some collection of real life experience and real life observations that you can go make, but they break other important things. It's one of these things where you have to keep hammering away at one problem, but doing so causes a break somewhere else. So hopefully that has given you one more easy rebuttal for why the Earth is round and not flat.